Okay, so we're looking at a quick introduction to the metal lathes that are used at Gosford Tape Fitting and Machining. This is a video on what would be the most common type we use at the moment. It is a Colchester Triumph 2000 machine. Just go through and explain a few of the major components of the machine. Starting off with, we have this part here which is referred to as the headstock. The headstock contains our spindle. If we look at the front of this spindle, the spindle nose is actually using a cam lock system to attach the chuck to the front of the spindle. We have a gearbox which we use to control the speeds of the machine. The way in which this gearbox works is we align the colours between the outer rim, the inner and the central. So if I wanted to run the machine at 190 RPM, I'd move my levers so I have them lined up. Blue, blue, blue gives me 190 RPM. Also, on the headstock of the machine, I have a set of levers which feed down through what we call the quick change gearbox. And that's this part of the machine here. We use this to control the speed of our lead screw and our feed shaft. Bottom shaft down here, the square one, is what's used to turn the machine on and off. This is a mechanical linkage that runs through to a clutch assembly which is located in the rear of the machine. Some of the other major components of the machine are the bed, which travels the full length of the machine. I have a tailstock at the rear end, and inside the tailstock we have a spindle. The tailstock spindle has the number four Morse taper machined into the end of it. I can use this to carry things such as drill chucks, drills, reamers, centers, other sorts of bits and pieces which can help me actually machine certain components. This thing that's sitting on the top of the bed, part that's here, 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 is referred to as the saddle or the carriage of the machine. The carriage of the machine is made up of the saddle, which is the part that sits across the bed. On top of the saddle, I have my cross slide. The cross slide travels at 90 degrees to the direction of my bed. On the front of my saddle, I have an apron. Inside the apron, I have the gears and the different levers which allow me to control whether or not I want to feed across the cross slide, along the bed, in both forward and reverse directions. I also have another lever on the side here which is connected to the lead screw. I use this lever to actually machine screw threads or worm wheels or anything else like that. To the right hand side of my carriage. I also have my stop start lever. The way in which this works, I push the lever down, I get the machine to run in the forward direction, I pull the lever up, the machine runs in the reverse direction. I also have on the end of my carriage a chasing dial. This part of the machine is also used to help me actually machine screw threads. Sitting on top of my cross slide, I have a compound slide. The compound slide is sitting on a swivel base which allows me to position the compound slide in such a way that I can actually machine certain angles with the machine. On top of the compound slide I have my tool post. Okay, so there's some of the major components of the machine. When we start using these machines, if you've never used a lathe before, one of the most important things is to ensure you actually have the machine in the Y position on this lever. The reason for that is it disengages the lead screw. The lead screw is disengaged. Should you accidentally bump this lever on the carriage of the machine, you won't accidentally engage the clasp nut around the lead screw and have the carriage traveling off down along the machine at an accelerated rate of knots. Another thing we need to 
concerned with is we need to know the location of our emergency stop buttons. On these machines, this is our emergency stop button, this is our start button. These two buttons here are actually used to control the on-off of the coolant pump. It's important that we actually make sure we have clean coolant in our lathes and the consistency of the oil water mixture is correct, otherwise I can end up having the machine rust quite easily. Another thing I need to consider in terms of safety is that I have a foot brake on the machine. You might see foot brakes on all machines. Some machines have electronic brakes fitted. These brakes actually work as soon as you move the lever to the stop position. All right, first things first, going about setting up or installing a chuck on a nose of my spindle. As I said, these machines have a cam lock system. It is important that you actually clean the nose of the machine and ensure that the mating taper section inside your chuck is also clean. These two surfaces mate together and they ensure that your actual chuck is running true to the spindle of the machine. From our lathe board, I remove my key which I use to actually engage the cam locks. Very carefully slide your chuck up towards the face of the spindle nose and lift onto the spindle nose holding in place and lock in one of the cam locks. You'll notice on the cam locks that we have two small arrows. It's important that the actual nut for the cam lock is engaged between these two arrows. If it is not, you need to remove the chuck and readjust the cam lock pins. So we go around making sure we lock it in. always turning in a clockwise direction. If I lock the chuck on using an anti-clockwise movement with the key, I am actually pushing the chuck off the face of the spindle. Okay, so we're engaged. We remove the chuck, chuck from underneath the lathe, place it in a position where it's safely out of the way. Okay, so now our machine's ready to use. Some of the safety aspects of the machine is you need to be aware that bad habits such as leaning on the headstock of the machine put yourself in a particularly dangerous situation. Should you slip, you will fall into the actual chuck, which is the moving part of the machine. So you want to try and avoid that at all times. Another thing you will notice is these sections of the machine once, when the machine is actually running, they are turning. So another very important part of using any sort of lathe is to ensure that you have your clothes tucked in. No loose shirts or belts or pants with rips or anything like that. One of the last things you need is to actually be caught in the lead screw and dragged into the machine. When using the, uh, when using the lathe, one of the most important things is to position yourself in such a way that you're protecting yourself with as much of the machine as possible. If I was to put a tool in this tool post and start taking a cut, most of the action of the cut will be occurring in this area of the machine. That's the dangerous component. If I stand towards the rear of the tool post, I have clear access to the controls on my carriage and if anything goes wrong, needs to come through that fault or mistake or whatever that may occur on the tool needs to come through the tool post to actually gain access to me as I'm standing behind the machine. As I said, this is just a quick rundown on the machine. You will be given a lot more detailed instruction as to how to use the machine, but for those of you who need a quick refresher, you're quite welcome to use this video.